Hi everyone and welcome to a session on Chinese pottery design. Um, today we're going to be looking at the blue and white style that was first created in the Tang Dynasty. In particular we're going to be drawing today the um, blue dragon that is featured prominently in this type of pottery. Now what we're going to need to, for today's project, we're going to need an eraser, a pencil, and a blue pencil or a blue pen, blue paint, uh, any type of blue um, utensil will work um, to create that contrast between the blue and the white. Now the first step in drawing the blue dragon is going to be to just start with the basic shapes. Um, so here we started with a circle, added a kind of rectangular shape for the snout, and then did long curved lines to fill out the rest of the body. Very serpentine, very snake-like body. Um, we added a slit here to show where the back is going to bend. And now you can see that we utilize most of the space here on the page, not leave very much negative space on the page. And now um, one thing to note too about the uh, pottery is that the way the pottery is originally made is that this would be painted onto a piece of glass porcelain um, that was pure white um, that was then uh, painted with blue ink covered with a white or a clear glaze and then it would be uh, fired in a kiln or a bonfire and that would give it a nice sheen and contrast between the two different pieces. For our drawing we're just using paper and pencil. Now, um, on the second step, we're going to add a little bit more of the detail. So you see I added some horns, and I used triangular shapes uh, to map out the arms. Uh, I did kind of like a number seven for the different talons. Now, the dragons can have multiple talons because they're mythical creatures, so there's no precedence to say how many talons they should have. I've given this one five. You could give them three. You could give them four. Um, I added a, one leg down here. The other leg is going off the page. Um, not intentional, but... Sometimes when you map it out, that's just what happens, so we work with it. The next step is we're going to add a little bit more detail. Um, so here you can see again, um, I just started to add the belly scales of the snake, which are going to follow the curvature of the S shapes um, to add a little bit more detail and some variation to the design. Um, we have to remember too here where we curve the back we want to make sure that we end the belly scales because it's going to actually move underneath and start up down here now. Um, I added some more details to the arms. So now one thing to remember too is that these sculptures don't necessarily have the muscle structure. So you're not going to see a lot of muscle detail, but the outline of the muscles is still there. Um, we added a little bit of fins here to the tail and just kind of filled in the detail on the hands and the arms. next stage, we added even more detail to the dragon now, so now we're getting a little bit more fun, starting to take more of that Chinese dragon uh, look. We added in the mane, so Chinese dragons have a mane much like a lion would. We added in the mustache or the whiskers for the dragon, built out the mouth and the eyes. Just kind of darken the eyes out real quick so you can see them. Um, the mouth, we finished the scales, we added... Um, fins or spines all the way down the back, cross them over here, and just kind of continue to add a little bit more detail. So in the next stage now, we're ready to actually start using the blue. So this is where we're actually going to fill in the details and values, the different uh, tints and shades of the blue ink to great depth and volume in the dragon. As you can see, I started at the head and filled in some darker areas to create a shadow, uh, darkened in the beard, the inside of the mouth, did a little bit lighter blue around the face, filled in the hair on the mane, did a little um, cross hatching here to make the horns have a little bit of a shadow on them, uh, shaded in the belly scales to give them variation between dark and light to give them the kind of a sheen look. And then the scales on the dragon themselves are kind of a bunch of U shapes hooked together, like fish scales would be. Um, so to do that, um, to give them that kind of a little bit of a glow, we wanted to make the scales blue and have a little bit of a white tint to them, or a white glow. So to do that, we just kind of fill in the back area with the blue and leave the tip white. 
Now this is where I would recommend um, if you don't have good hand strength to use a marker or ink because um, to press down on all these scales that you're going to do the entire length of the body and on the limbs um, can take a toll on your body. Um, it would have been a little bit easier for me to use ink but I chose color pencil. Another thing to note at this step too is you need to make sure that the scales on the arms are flowing the direction downward towards the hand. So we want to build those out to go this way so they don't run the same pattern as the body and the scales kind of move with the curvature. After that we have the finished product and you have your blue and white dragon. Uh, you can see how the scales on the arms move upward towards the hands and how the scales follow the curvature of the body all the way down to the tail. We darkened in the spines and the feet. And again, with this being a mythical creature, there's no right or wrong way to do it. You could have the arms in any position, the legs in any position. Uh, you can make the body longer, you can make the body shorter, the neck longer, the tail longer. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility when doing a dragon. Um, I hope you enjoy this session and have fun with your dragons.